Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of this garage life that is still happening. The weather is still beautiful, it's September, month of September, but the weather is still good enough to do things. I'm planning on wrapping things up once the weather goes bad, I guess. I don't like getting cold and all. Well, so in this episode I'm going to talk about the importance of having a proper power supply and I'm going to just demonstrate something that I've been using proper power supply when you are doing BMW coding so I'm not going to be in the picture for the rest of this video but I'm going to say this and point at some things so if you're trying to do any BMW coding or are attempting to do something like changing changing some options and such it's really important to keep voltages in the range that is specified. You cannot really get into a low voltage situation when you get that low battery warning that's going to be bad. You can run into trouble if, if that happens. So the bottom line is you have to keep your voltage, your battery voltage at about 14 volts. Yes, the electronics are going to function on the battery 12 volt output because a fully charged battery is going to be about 12.5 volts without load. A fully charged battery is uh, going to last you a while. A little bit, I guess. So here's the power supply that I've been using while doing all this coding and updating modules and such. You could try using something smaller than this, like a battery tender or a small battery charger, but that may still be not enough. And I'm going to demonstrate why. I guess that's the whole point of, uh, of this video. I just wanted to demonstrate and show what this car is going to do with the voltages and amps while different situations are present, I guess. So this is a really cool power source, power supply box. It's got 50 amps capacity, 15 to 30 volts. It's not 12, it's 15. It's got the adjuster, it's got one output that is 50 amps and it's got three smaller outputs that are 10 amps switchable different switches to turn them on and off okay so I'm going to go through a couple of different situations so I can just demonstrate what uh, voltage and well mainly the amperage that the car pulls so this is uh, like a basic situation the car is turned off the key is uh, the key is not in the ignition so so the car is is, is not a slip I guess but it may be a slip so I'm going to so I hooked up the plus and the minus the car is off doors are closed and all the power sources power loads are off so I'm going to turn the power switch on so I turned the power supply on it booted up and it shows 14.1 volts and it's kind of running about 4.3 amps at this point that's probably battery taking charge because uh, well 14 volts to uh, to the battery is, is going to charge it it's a uh, my battery is fully charged but it's still pulling some amperage so about 4 amps so I'm going to stick the key in and uh, I just got the key into the ignition I did not turn the ignition on I just inserted the key it's about 7 point close to 8 amps that's fine for for a smaller power supply so now I'm going to turn the ignition on so things just turned on and it's pulling about 15 amps someone is starting to cut the grass in any case 14 volts about 13 14 14 amps also so the ignition is on there is nothing else that is on. Let me double check. Lights are off, radio is off, heater is off. So I have the angel eyes on, which are, I guess, on by default or, well, I, in any case, they're on. And what else do I have? And my tail lights are on. So that's kind of a, I guess, a state that the car is in. So with the ignition on, you would see a couple of different uh, things on the dash that's the status of the car or a state of the car while you're doing programming it's pulling about 13 
14, 12 something amps. So you have to have a power supply hooked up to your car that's going to provide 14, about 14 volts and about between 10 and 15 amps. And it's really unavoidable. So if you, uh, if you want to deal with ruined modules, bricked modules and such, you, you can try using something smaller but I don't recommend to have a smaller power supply. So like I said, the, the point of this video was to demonstrate what this car is going to pull while just sitting with the ignition on without anything turned on and you really have to be prepared to have a proper power supply to really provide that voltage and that amperage. The downside to this power source, power supply, is that it's 15 to 30 volts and the lowest that I can set it to is about 14.2. That's just barely enough. I would still want to have a, would like to have a, a possibility of turning this down to say 12 volts. Just for maybe other projects. That's approximately what, what it is like with the power requirements on, on, on these cars. I really like how this this thing is set up. I have a it's got 50 amps here and it's got 10 amps, 10 amps and 10 amps right there. And it also has it's got two USB type A ports, 5 volts, 2.5 amp. So it's not um anything fancy, but at least I can can plug a a thing or two here while while doing this like I can charge my phone or a tablet that's convenient really and it's got two fans once the temperature of, of this device goes up to whatever it thinks too hot it turns the blowers on and cools, cools itself down so I highly recommend having something uh, something of this size if, if you plan on on doing any coding like I said, you may survive with something smaller, and people did. People used battery tenders and things like that, but, but there is a danger in not providing a proper voltage and amperage. That's pretty much all for, the, for now, for this video. And here's the noise it makes when it's running those blowers. <laughs>